In this section, we're going to cover breath hold diving. We're going to cover the problems and the solutions. What I'd like you to do right now is pause the video and take three consecutive breath holds. First one, until you feel a bit uncomfortable and start breathing again. Doesn't matter what time, whether it's 10 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute, and it's not important. Give yourself two to three minutes rest. Then take another breath. Take this breath until you're decidedly uncomfortable. Then breathe out, relax. Another two to three minutes recovery. Take a final breath, hold it, and do this one until you're decidedly uncomfortable. But we're not talking here, I mean, there is possible some people can hold their breath and black out straight up. So we're not talking extremes here. Please don't get uh, caught up in that. We're just getting you used to holding your breath and observing what happens. So on this final breath, I want you to have a look at when you get the urge to breathe, what, it, what is happening to your body? Where do you feel the urge to breathe? Where do you feel, is there any contractions going on? I want you to have a look at that because we're going to discuss all of that shortly. When we hold our breath, the oxygen is used up and it's converted into CO2, carbon dioxide. Now it's the carbon dioxide, the byproduct of your breathing and exercise that gives you the contractions and the urge to breathe. It's not low oxygen. It's important to know this. It's high carbon dioxide. With carbon dioxide high, your body goes into a different mode. It tries to, it tries to get as much out of the oxygen as it possibly can. So it does a few things. And these we call the mammalian dive reflex. Mammalian as to do with mammals. Mammalian dive reflex. And reflex is something that happens when you're doing something, a reflex, it's automatic. Now, all our aquatic mammals have this on as their usual situation, but humans don't. Most person, when they hold their breath, within 15 seconds, they're struggling and next to no reaction in their body. So let's cover the mammalian dive reflex so we can see what it entails. The first thing about this dive reflex is the urge to breathe. This is brought about by the carbon dioxide. This is your body's effort to stay alive. It will tell you to breathe. You want to breathe. And to some degree, we have to work against or around that to be able to extend our breath holds. The second thing that the, the dive reflex involves is that it slows your heart rate down. So you, uh, you may have a heart rate, you know, 60 or something like that. When you've got a good dive reflex and you start holding your breath, it can drop down 30 without too much problem. Well, it's like half. So you've got to understand a good dive reflex is going to give you longer breath holds. There's another action here that happens, and it happens in the spleen, where hemoglobin-rich red corpuscles are injected into the bloodstream. A diver that's trained a long time can get a huge injection, and this means a much longer breath hold. The reason that the average person out here cannot get that immediate strong breath holds is he doesn't have enough hemoglobin in the blood to carry this oxygen. The hemoglobin is a protein. It's a protein that helps carry the oxygen around the body. And there's another thing that happens with this dive reflex, and that is the restriction of blood to the extremities. Arms, legs, these are extremities. So you'll find that there's less blood goes in there. It contracts the extremities. The, uh, it's called vascular constriction, where all the blood vessels contract. And the idea is to center the blood to the center with your heart, lungs, and brain, and get that as the focus. So this is all a very survival thing. Now, when you're training, we'll talk about training soon, but when you're training, you're training to get this kicked in so you can get the most out of your breath hold. So of course, the question on most people's lips is how to increase your breath hold. We all want a longer breath hold. What does a long breath hold mean? It means more time underneath 
more terrain you can explore, more time to encourage the fish to swim up to you. So a good long breath hold, safe breath hold, is what we want. So how do we do this? So probably the way it's been done for many years is you just go diving. And you keep diving and you keep diving and you just keep your body in the position where it is being used underwater, breath holding, and you will develop over time a good dive reflex. However, this can take years. And especially if you're in Brisbane where you're only diving you know, sometimes once a week or once every two weeks or sometimes once a month. If the weather is bad, sometimes you don't get out that much. So it's a long-term process if you only use diving as a way to increase your breath hold. So the other way you can do it is you can start training. And we train in the pool. Why do we do this? Well, we can use our night times. You know, rather than pound the pavement or push bike around the neighborhood, we can use our night times to train. And we've got some systematic and good techniques to bring about change in the person's breath holding ability. However, when you bring free diving, training for spearfishing into the pool, you've got a lot of safety concerns. Why? Because you think, because you can see the bottom and it's in the sides and that, and you've no waves, there's no current, you think you're safe. And so you tend to push. And uh, if you're not training with a responsible twin who knows what to do, you can get into trouble. And people have. People have died in the pool because they pushed too hard and just went unconscious. So you need a system to handle this. And we now have got a, a series of clubs around the main centres of the Australia. Uh, there's major, they are freediving clubs. However, you've got to understand that a freediving club deals in breath hold diving. And whether you're doing breath hold diving for one single dive or a couple of deep dives, or you're doing a breath hold training for multiple dives of a spearfisher, the training is similar but different. I've always focused on having something for spearfishers. Why? Because when I got into spearfishing, there were a lot of blackouts in a series of about three years, and I decided I wanted to do something about that. And so I studied what was occurring and why they were blacking out. And I found out a few things which I'll mention later on in the safety section of this briefing. One of the things we found out was when you train, you have to have your safety systems good. Not just, okay, they have gotta be good. They have gotta be drilled. So, these clubs we have around Australia, they all have an induction, and the induction brings a person's safety up so that he or she can save someone if they're blacked out, who knows exactly what to do, bring them round, and what to do afterwards. Uh, this is vital for the safe operation of these clubs, so it's their, it's their normal procedures. These clubs are good to join. In Brisbane, we've got the Brisbane Bull Sharks, we've got the Brisbane Freedivers, both very good training groups. Uh, we have Sydney Freedivers in Sydney. We've got Melbourne Freedivers in Melbourne. South Australian Freedivers in Adelaide, very strong group there. We've got Perth Freedivers, I'm not sure of their name, but uh, there's a group over there who train. So you could rock up there and say, I wanna actually do stuff to help me in spear fishing, and people will be able to help you. There's a lot of exercises that you can do. In the Brisbane Bull Sharks, we have probably half to two thirds spearfishers and the other third freedivers. So we're catering a lot for the, for the spearfishers. And we find the spearfishers get very interested in freediving. Why? Because it's a great cross sport for their spearfishing. It's very possible to get good gains from this sort of training. However, it's never to be done alone. Not even in the bath. A breath hold that results in a blackout will drown a person in a bath. So you've got to re be responsible for that. I think Hawaii had lost use of swimming pools right around the, the state because someone drowned doing static apnea in one of their pools. So this person had the bottom, feet on the bottom or whatever. We just cannot afford. It's tragic, of course, and we cannot afford such a loss of life. But it also means we lose training in venues all around, so we could lose everything just from some carelessness. 
So it's also possible to do apnea training walking around. It's called apnea walking. And you do so many steps with uh, holding your breath, and then you do so many steps breathing, and then you do so many steps holding your breath, and then you do so many steps breathing. If you were, had nothing else to do, didn't have access to a pool, so apnea walking is a good way to increase your breath hold. You can change it around a little bit, you know, for example, if you increase the distance, you're getting used to working with low oxygen. If you start decreasing the recovery, then you're working with CO2 and you're getting used to or tolerating the actions of CO2 on your body. These will all result in increased breath hold. At this point in time, when we're talking at training, we must be a bit disciplined here. Every now and then I'll hear someone say, well, you know, uh, I'm better now because I've blacked out. And uh, it's kind of like, you know, they sort of use that experience. If this is an experience I needed to have, you know, or something like that. I think this is a dangerous viewpoint. The fact of the matter is any blackout is a failure. You've got to take it. Beginning to end, a blackout is a failure. Yes, if you ever have a blackout, you've got a lot of stuff that you can use to help you no, never have another blackout. And that's probably the best use of this. Never train to the point of blackouts and sambas as a usual thing. Thanks for watching, guys. If you'd like to see more, we have loads of content on our YouTube channel, so be sure to check it out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and be sure to check out our stores. Or you can shop online at www.spearfishing.com.au.